Good day everyone and welcome to the transport for Sydney Vlogs channel. I'm just releasing this video to express my appreciation and to thank each and every one of you for helping us reach 1000 subscribers. Yes, we just recently um, achieved this milestone um, earlier this week and I'm just releasing this video um, as I mentioned to like thank you guys for supporting us along the way and for helping us reach the, the stage that we have reached. So I did. Rem I do remember a few months ago in a community post that I had a few surprises planned for when we would reach 1,000 subscribers. Well, this is one of them. And the real surprise in this video is really that I'm revealing my face to you guys for the very first time. A lot of you guys that are watching right now may have s seen me before or may know who I am, but I'm guessing most of you guys um, don't or haven't like seen me before and don't really know what I look like as I haven't really i'm um, exposed my face in any of um, my videos in the past up until now so yeah even though you, you guys might have seen me through like window reflections when filming at train stations but yeah that's just small glimpses of it so yeah i thought i'd just um reveal my face to you guys just so for those of you who are wondering like what i look like who's the guy i'm um, behind the phone like holding the camera well this is who i am so for those of you who don't know like my name, um, I don't really reveal, I don't mention my name in my video introductions at, at all really, but um, my name is Sean for those of you who don't know and a bit about what I do. So I recently finished uni uh, in January this year and I've been working full time uh, at a professional services firm as an auditor since March. So for those of you who are not aware or not sure about what auditing is, well, what we basically do um, in auditing is we will look at um, financial statements of clients that we are allocated to, and then we'll perform uh, planning, testing, and concluding procedures, and then come up with a view and an opinion as to whether the items listed on the client's balance sheet is, has been accurately recorded and accurately or correctly disclosed in accordance with um, the accounting standards that they report by. So yeah, that's just a bit about what I do. I'm just... Uh, one of um, a team of auditors who help out on, on each audit engagement that we're allocated to. And um, yeah, I've been doing it since March this year. I uh, found it very interesting and I'm gonna continue to, to pursue this career um, over the next few years at least. So yeah, that's a bit about what I do. Um, train spotting, releasing all these transport videos is really just a hobby of mine that I, that I enjoy doing during my free time. So um, yeah, I've been doing it for nearly, um, or approaching two and a half years now. I remember starting this channel on the 14th of August, uh, 2020, even though I actually started filming videos uh, early on that year before the first COVID lockdown, I decided um, that it was eventually time to start my own YouTube channel after watching other YouTubers and, and seeing the success that they had. So yeah, I decided to um, start my YouTube channel and now, two years and almost four months later uh, we've now just surpassed 1000 subscribers so yeah um as i mentioned earlier again i want to like thank you guys for helping us get to this stage and i assure you all that there will be many more videos to come as i i still enjoy um filming different transport modes um, and different like projects across this city and yeah i hope to be around to see all of it um when all of the new metro lines open and even the new light rail um, from Parramatta up to Collingford and eventually onto uh, Olympic Park. So I guess I could probably wrap this video up here, but rather than doing that, I thought I'd just extend this video and take this opportunity to have a conversation with, um, with each and every one of you um, about some of the transport projects which are happening across this city and yeah, what I anticipate might happen in the future. There are a lot of open questions right now, which a lot of us probably want answered. But yeah, a lot of them are still up in the air. Um, for example, like when is the new metro line going to open from Chatsworth to Sydenham? When is the conversion of the Bankstown line going to going to be finished? When is the um, first stage of the Parramatta Light Rail going to open up? So those are all very common questions um, that a lot of us are curious to know about. But yeah, I guess until the government um, makes official announcements as to um, when these projects will be commissioned and open to the public, I guess all we can do is um, anticipate based off um, the current status and based off what we know. So yeah, that's that. Um, I guess I'll start with the first topic that I wanna talk about, 
and um, that will be Sydney Metro. So with Sydney Metro, um, I guess I'll start with the underground stations as that's probably something that we're all curious to know about, like what these new stations are going to look like. So um, as far as I'm aware of right now, um, this, most of the underground stations, if not all, are really starting to take shape. Platform screen doors have already been installed and I think there's still a lot of fit out work needs to be finished um, throughout each of these stations as well as throughout the tunnels. Uh, maybe the, most of the fit out work along the new twin tunnels running underneath the harbour have been finished, but I'm sure there's probably still some things that need to be patched up here and there. But otherwise, um, right now, um, the plan is for the new line to open in two stages. The first stage from Chatswell to Sydenham, hopefully we'll see that open in early 2024. Again, um, obviously that can change. I'm no engineering expert, so I'm not too sure if there's avenues for construction workers to somehow fast track the the remaining um, work that needs to take place and whether we might even have the line open by late next year, but that's probably highly unlikely right now. And um, an early 2024 opening is more realistic at this point in time. So with Sydney Metro, I'll just continue to keep an eye out on what is happening. Um, on my way to work, when I do work in the office, every morning I do pass through Chatswood. So normally, um, obviously, the Chatswood dark side is a, has been a, one of the the main or one of the bigger construction sites that has um, been given recognition um, since construction for this new line started. So I do normally look up the window to see what is happening and if much has changed. There was a track work possession for one week during early October. And during that time, um, a lot of work took place to um, close the gap between the existing tracks which run just south of Chatswood to connect with the new tracks which run into the tunnel. There's still a bit of a gap, but I believe we're talking about centimeters here. So yeah, a lot of work took place during that week to, I guess, um, install um, more track to close the gap. And new fencing was also installed um, to allow the Sydney trains running lines to be segregated from the Sydney Metro lines. So that also, um, the rest of that took place uh, during that week. And also other things such as installing overhead wiring and um, installing further staunchings and gantries and, and whatnot. Also right now, um, progress is happening to build a new uh, services building where the old acoustics shed used to be. So that services building will house critical cabling equipment, um, fire systems, water hydraulics, etc. So yeah, that's still currently in progress. But yeah, the Chatswood dive site is um, approaching completion and so is all other projects which are happening across this new line as well or from Chatswood to Sydney at least. So hopefully uh, we might see trains start testing um, in, into these new twin harbour tunnels by mid next year. Um, because almost 100% of the rail line between Chatswood and Sydney is underground, it's probably going to be hard for me to to get any vantage points to film like testing videos and when testing does commence. I know there is a, uh, the Mowbray Road Bridge um, around 200 meters south of Chatwood Station. However, the tunnels start around 50 or 100 meters before then, so I'm not too sure if I'll be able to film a nice clear uh, video of trains testing from the Mowbray Road Bridge. And then you also have the Bedwin Road Bridge from Sydney, but that's also well before the tunnels finish. So again, I'm not too sure if there will be any vantage points um, along the new metro line between Chatswood and Sydney to film any videos once trains start testing, but I'll see what I can do. And yeah, that's that. Um, also, I remember in the few months leading up to the opening of the Sydney Metro Northwest line, some of the new stations um, hosted open days that allowed the um, public to actually walk into the station and see what it looked like. From memory, I believe Kellyville had one of these, maybe Rouse Hill as well, and I think Castle Hill too. So I have signed up for newsletters and I will um, keep a lookout on my um, inbox to see if there's any of those open days coming up. And if there are, then I'll definitely sign up and see if I can attend a few of those. However, that's probably not going to um, even be considered until early 2024, or at least a few months before the new line opens. So it's probably still a month away. 
but I'm aware of these open days. Um, to, happens with the Metro Northwest line, and hopefully um, some of the new underground stations between Chatham and Sydenham will um, offer some of these open days as well. I'll definitely sign up for them if I do read and hear about it. So yeah, I just wanted to mention that. Um, in regards to the Bankstown conversion or the conversion of the line from Sydenham to Bankstown, that's unfortunately um, still running behind schedule um, due to a few reasons. Um, probably the lockdown last year um, probably played a huge part as the Bankstown Canterbury uh, LGA was one of the worst hit um, with last year's uh, three month lockdown. And yeah, I remember there was a pause in construction. So that obviously, um, I guess, pushed the timeline of um, each of these mini tasks back by several months. And as a result, the conversion of the bank design line has been pushed back to probably around late this, uh, late 2024, I mean. Um, assuming that the line from Chatsworth to Sydney will open by early 2024, the bank design line conversion will probably take an extra six months or several months at least. So we're probably still a couple of years away, at least from seeing Metro lines running on the fully converted Bankstown line. But again, I'll, I'll keep an eye on, I'll keep an eye out on what's happening along the Bankstown line and I'll try to um, at least film update videos every so often. I haven't gotten around to the section between Bankstown and Sydney that much lately due to other commitments. But yeah, hopefully um, throughout the summer, I'll try to definitely get onto the Bankstown line and film some videos um, along the Bankstown line, or at least the section between Bankstown and Sydney that's going to be converted into Metro uh, come a few years' time. So yeah, that is that. Um, before I move on to the next topic, I'm just thinking if there's anything else I want to mention um, relating to Sydney Metro. I can't really think of anything right now, but um, if anyone has something of interest that maybe I didn't mention, um, feel free to add it in the comments section below. But um, probably the next topic that I can transition to is um, the upgrades, which are happening at a lot of the major stations across Sydney. Um, a lot of them are not just related to Sydney Metro, but are more like accessibility upgrades. Obviously, the main one is at Central. Um, and many of you may be aware that Central Walk has now opened, well, sections of it at least. To be more specific, it's just the south and half of Central Walk that has opened. So you can only access the escalators on the south side um, up to the suburban platforms. The escalators on the north side still require a bit of work. I believe some of the, the lifts um, between platform 16 and 23, I think the lift on platforms 22 and 23 um, still needs some work and maybe one or two others as well. So um, yeah, access to the lifts also are blocked off to the public for now. Um, as down on Central Walk, entrance to the lift is on the northern end, which is currently blocked off with the fencing. So yeah, maybe we'll see other parts of Central Walk slowly open up to the public. For example, maybe we might see the new, um, or we might see the hoardings change to allow the public to access the new lifts. And then eventually um, the new escalators on the north side will be open to the public. And then eventually the entirety of Central Walk will open hopefully as well um, by maybe early next year. There's still a lot of work to do with the new entrance on Chalmers Street. That still seems to be months away. Um, but yeah, um, next time I do head out to Central and film an update video, I'll um, show you guys what the Chalmers Street entrance looks like, as I will show you guys all the other mini tasks that are happening as part of the Central upgrade. So yeah, um, the new Chalmers Street entrance is uh, still months away, but hopefully we'll see that open as well sometime early next year. Um, along with the new um, North-South concourse, which is also the Metro concourse. Right now, it's still just a temporary passageway connecting the existing Northern concourse to um, Central Walk. So yeah, um, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, um, I'm, I'm anticipating that the, the new upgrade at Central will slowly open up, new areas will open up to the public until eventually the full project is completed when we'll hopefully see the, the finished product um, I'm really liking what it looks like and I think once we see the finished product, it will definitely look awesome. And I do plan to film like another video, or many videos um, throughout the next few months at Central. And I'll definitely film um, a final one once the upgrade is completely finished. 
But yeah, for now, I'll just try to release update videos um, every month. I know I did mention back in my July update video that I would release update videos of Central more frequently. However, unfortunately, due to other commitments, I just haven't come around to filming these Central update videos as often as I would have liked to. I do plan to get to another one um, later this month. So yeah, um, do keep an eye out on that. And yeah, I'll just continue to um, monitor what happens at Central and um, hopefully we'll see the finished product by early next year. So yeah, that is that. Um, I guess the next station I can talk about is Redfern as Redfern is also one of the busiest stations in Sydney that is also receiving a massive upgrade in the form of a, uh, the new aerial concourse on the south side. A lot associated with that new area concourse will be two new entrances. Um, the Marion Street entrance, which is on the eastern side of the station, is progressing quite rapidly. Whereas um, the new entrance on the western side, um, which connects with Little Everly Street, I think is still um, months away. So the new entrance on Marion Street is more advanced at this point in time. But right now, the new concourse is really starting to take shape. Um, so yeah, I'll get out to Redfern again sometime soon and film another update video with the new concourse. So that's Redfern. I'll, again, with Central Walk and the rest of Central's upgrade, hopefully we'll see um, sections of Redfern's new concourse open by early next year. Right now, it looks more likely that we'll have the new concourse and the Marin Street entrance open first, and eventually the new Little Everly Street entrance will also open um, once work um, happens to demolish sections of that heritage building, which is still in the way. And when I guess fit out work and the new entrance stairs finished. So yeah, that's that with Redfern. And the new concourse at Sydenham is still closed. I haven't actually traversed through Sydenham that often lately, but last time I did, which was um, last weekend actually, um, the, I still saw the fencing um, blocking entrance to the new concourse. So yeah, the new concourse at Sydney is still close to the public, but hopefully we'll see it open maybe sometime around Christmas, if not early next year, well before Metro services commence, as I definitely think it would um, provide a, a big accessibility boost if they can somehow open its new concourse before Sydney Metro services actually uh, begin. But yeah, again, along with Central and Redfern, I'll keep an eye on what happens with Sydney. And yeah, once the new concourse opens, I do plan to film a dedicated video as well as for Redfern and for the rest of Central's upgrade. Also, um, some of the stations along the Bankston line have also been receiving major upgrades. Most of them seem to be minor in nature, like just platform resurfacing, installing new metro style benches, signage, um, maybe some renovation works of existing um, heritage listed buildings on the platforms. And some stations are also, or have already received new lifts. So yeah, um, however, I think um, Camp C and Dulwich Hill are a few stations which will look significantly different. Um, starting with Camp C, um, they are building a new plaza um, at the entrance, and that's probably, our, I guess it's part of Sydney Metro. But yeah, it's also improving accessibility to Camp, Camp C station and making it look more welcoming than to what it is now. I haven't filmed a video at Camp C since 2020, I believe. So yeah, hopefully I'll get to Camp Sim um, late this year, if I have time, if not early next year. I'll definitely film another video there, along with showing you guys some footage of what the new um, canopies look like um, where the, at the concourse, and that's where the new plaza is going to be. So that's something to look out for at Camp C. And also Dali Chill, um, as many of us may be aware, Dali Chill is receiving a new footbridge or a new mini concourse that's going to connect the train platform with the light rail stop. Um, that new concourse was, I believe, assembled off-site and was actually installed during a recent two-week track record possession, which took place over late September, early October. But I haven't actually been able to um, get around to Dalich Hill and filming a video there. And I haven't even traversed um, Dalich Hill in, in many months, I believe since the VSET tour um, early September. So uh, Dalit Chill is also another station uh, along the bank sunlight that I hope to get to um, very soon. And I'll definitely show you guys footage of um, what the new concourse looks like. There's still a lot of fit out work that needs to be done. Um, but yeah, it's, I guess it's starting to take shape now. And yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely something to, to look forward to. And um, definitely will, um, again, just like all the other projects that I've mentioned so far in this video, 
I'll definitely film another um, update video or final update video Dali Chill once the new concourse is complete. So yeah, I guess that's probably, that probably wraps up um, the order that I wanted to talk about in regards to um, accessibility upgrades at a lot of um, the stations throughout Sydney. There are quite a fair few other stations which are also um, in the process of receiving upgrades. However, they're kind of just minor in nature. Um, like for example, a few stations on the Northern Line, Thornley and Deniston namely, are in the process of receiving new lifts. I noticed I saw um, hoardings up at Kilara and White Tower. So I believe there's some sort of work happening there as well. And then I believe Doonside on the Western Line I saw is receiving a new lift as well. And that's just a few of many other stations which are currently receiving some sort of upgrade. But yeah, um, if I do visit, when I do visit these stations later on, I will briefly mention it and maybe show you guys some footage. But yeah, the main focus, um, well, for me, um, I probably will focus mainly, obviously, on what's happening at Central, Redfern, even Erskine with the new footbridge. I did film a few videos there during September and October. So yeah, that's also um, taking place now. Um, a lot of scaffolding up there and um, I expect it to obviously look um, more, I guess, welcoming, more finished um, in the coming months. So yeah, I'm really keeping an eye out on these stations. But if I do see other upgrades which are happening at stations that I just happen to be filming at, then I will definitely mention it and show you guys some clips of that. So yeah, um, that's that with, I guess, the accessibility upgrades. Um, so yeah, the next topic I'll talk about is the Parramatta Light Rail. So I've already started filming some of the walkthrough videos of the Parramatta Light Rail. So far I have covered from Westmead through to Fennel Street, which is a few stops just before the Parramatta CBD. So it's just that side of the light rail um, that I've covered right now. Um, hopefully in a few weeks time I should, or well, I do plan to um, make my way down to Parramatta and film some more of the walkthrough videos. I'll hopefully be able to cover from Fennel Street um, out to Tramway Avenue. And then probably um, I'll have to save the running section from Tramway Avenue to Carlingford for another day. As yeah, um, to cover Fennel Street to Carlingford. I mean, I do enjoy walking long distances, but it probably will be a bit too much for me for one day. Uh, so um, yeah, normally I do have other commitments that I want to get to as well. So yeah, I'll probably cover Fennel Street to Tramway Avenue and next time I'm down in Parramatta and then eventually I'll be able to cover from Tramway Avenue to Carlingford. And then after every few months or so, once more progress takes place, I'll continue to refilm these walkthrough videos just to give you guys a glimpse of um, like what's really happening with the Parramatta Light Rail and trying to keep you guys as much up to date as possible with that project. That's just stage one. Um, the government has already announced a further uh, commitment to um, construct stage two of the Parramatta Light Rail, which will um, extend from Tramway Avenue past the new maintenance facility and to Sydney Olympic Park and the uh, Wentworth Point vicinity. But that won't take place until um, stage one of the light rail has finished construction, I believe. So yeah, we, that's probably, um, that probably won't start to really take shape until late this decade. But yeah, also something that I'll um, be hopefully um, film in the future, or that I, I definitely plan to film stage two um, of the Parramatta Light Rail in the future, as well as all of the other new Sydney Metro lines, which open up once um, new stations and new lines are open to the public. But yeah, for now, I'll just continue to keep an eye on what's happening. I'll, every now and then, I'll do briefly read through these newsletters that um, these um, that, that are released on, on the website. And um, yeah, I will um, try to keep an eye out for any major upgrade that takes place. I noticed with the, some of the stations um, along the Parramatta Light Rail, particularly from Westmead through the Fennel Street, um, they're starting to install canopies at a lot of the light rail stops. I noticed some of them have already received canopies and the rest should be in the process of receiving them right now. So yeah, um, really the Parramatta Light Rail is um, progressing quite rapidly along with Sydney Metro and um, the accessibility upgrades at many of the train stations um, throughout this city. So yeah, that's that with the Parramatta Light Rail. Um, and yeah, I'm just thinking if there's any other topics that I want to talk about um, before I wrap this video up. Yeah, something just came to mind um, that I wanted to talk about. That is the new intercity fleet. Um, for those of you that have been following the news, um, last week, the unions and the government finally came to an agreement 
on the signing of a new deed, which um, guarantees that modifications will be made to the new intercity fleet um, before they enter service. So these trains have been sitting in mothballs at different rail yards throughout Sydney and New South Wales for several months now, since I think September last year, which was when um, the union started the ban on the, the marrying fleet. And yeah, during this time, um, every few days, um, maybe it has been local hauled from A to B just to prevent rusting. So um, as far as I know, I think there are, I think four yards in total that are being used to store NIF trains. Um, obviously the maintenance facility um, at Kangiangi on the Central Coast has been used to store most of these sets. Um, I've seen a few sets being stored at the yards in Broadmeadow near Newcastle. Um, I've heard also there's a few being stored at Enfield at a time, and they're also storing some NIF sets at Lifgo. So yeah, right now they're using these four yards. Um, I haven't seen any NIF trains being stored at any of the other rail yards throughout the city. Um, so yeah, um, I guess for maybe another week or two, um, some of these trains will continue to be local hauled. However, um, hopefully they'll start running under their own power soon. I did hear that um, there are plans to um, roll out um, a few sets as a, like a preliminary operating model while the modifications are being completed on the remaining sets. So yeah, hopefully we might see a, maybe um, a few of these Marion D sets in service and within the next few months, just as a preliminary testing procedure or as an operating model. And then yeah, once the modifications are made, then obviously that will be rolled out across the entire fleet. Um, the Marion fleet is planned to be rolled out first on the Central Coast and Newcastle line. Um, they will replace the Oscars and the V sets on that line and then they'll eventually replace the V sets on the Blue Mountains line and eventually replacing all of the Oscars on the South Coast line. So that's currently the planned rollout for the Marion D sets. Um, yeah, obviously that never know that could change. But yeah, right now that's um, the plan that has been announced or uh, well, ages ago when we all thought they were going to enter service until the unions placed the ban on them. So yeah, um, that's that with the Marion fleet. I'll keep, an, I'll keep a lookout for any testing runs and if I happen to be available, um, maybe on a weekend and I just happen to be in the area where a NIF train may pass through, I'll definitely try to film some videos of um, Marion D sets testing as it's really been more than a year since um, I filmed any, any sets testing under their own power at least. I was lucky enough to film, I think, a, a transfer run of one of the new sets coming in uh, at Erskineville late last year. Um, but yeah, I haven't had much luck with um, seeing any of the transfer runs. I just haven't, I just haven't been available. Or I just haven't been filming at a location um, at the right place at the right time um, when a train has passed through. But yeah, I'll definitely keep a lookout on um, any um, Marion D set testing and definitely hopefully be able to film some videos and for you all of that. And once testing does recommence under its own power. So yeah, that's that with the Marion D sets. Or Marion, I'm not too sure if I might pronounce it correctly there. Um, but yeah, um, sometimes I call them NIF, sometimes I call them Marion D sets, and we use, we can use them interchangeably. But yeah, they have been given the name Marion, the Marion Fleet, um, which is the, I think, uh, a direct word for EMU. So yeah, um, that's that. Um, I don't think there's anything else I want to talk about. Um, if you guys have any transport related questions, um, feel free to pop them in the comment section below and I'll try my best to answer them to the best of my ability. If there's any other topics that maybe I could have mentioned which I didn't think about um, as of now um, that you guys can think about, feel free to pop them in the comment section below and I'm happy to like have a, a quick discussion about it. But yeah, um, that's about all I wanted to talk about for this video for now. Um, so again, I want to thank you guys for helping me reach 1,000 subscribers. Um, there will be another 1,000 subscriber special coming out tomorrow. Um, I do plan to release at 1 p.m. It's around a one hour long video and I think it will be a good one. So yeah, um, hopefully you guys will like it and that will be released um, at 1 p.m. tomorrow. So um, stay tuned for that. But yeah, otherwise, um, that's all I want to talk about for now. So I'm going to wrap this one up now. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, like and favorite this video, and I will see you next time.